So here we have a quick ride review. Did a 208k ride, a little fun ride, average about three watts per kilo for just around seven hours and seven hours moving time. On the $490 Reed Osprey, it's a four $500 road bike. I put my power meter on there so I could check out the wattage. It's a decent bike. It's how did it go doing on it? It's pretty comfy. See my cadence there for 200k, it's 93 cadence. This is all you want to focus on really is you want an average power, weighted power, and cadence because that's what matters the most. Speed varies a lot because you got wind, you got drafting. Speed means nothing. So that could be 10k an hour, that could be 60k an hour. It wouldn't really mean much. Cadence, power, that's bottom line. Power is what you want. Your average power and your cadence shows you your pedaling technique. So you're sitting around at least, you know, 80 to 100, 90s, around 90. Focus on 90. If, if in doubt, focus on 90. Uh, where we ride, we did a little loop down to Victor Harbour. You can show us good fun, you can zoom in on that. So we just cruise around. It's a fun ride coast to coast, and then rode back with Adam. Just two of us rode back from Victor Harbour. It's good stuff. Only got one flat tyre, and a good day. So the elevation up the freeway, a few little hills, but it was good. I passed, I literally passed a million, over a million dollars, over a million dollars of bicycles on my $500 bike. I remember I passed. S Works Venge, S Works Roubaix, S Works Tarmac, Pinot F8s with lightweights, and Colnago C60, a lot of bling, Parley bike, all the bling, every every bling bike you can imagine. I pass on my five hundred dollar bike, the Reed Osprey. The Osprey is flying, but here's the thing: it, it, it doesn't matter what bike you ride. If you want to spend five hundred bucks or fifteen thousand, I pass fifteen thousand dollar bikes on my five hundred dollar bike. As long as you're out there having fun, that's the main thing. As long as your bike fits you, that's the main thing. As long as you are pacing yourself properly and learning from it and spinning your little legs, that's the main thing. Um, so just because you're spending $15,000 on a bike doesn't mean you're not going to get passed by the vegan banana boy on his $500 bike. And the good thing about cycling is you don't, it's a sport where the, the the rider the person is really what makes the difference so as long as you've got a road bike and the gears work and the tires are pumped up that's what's the main thing people say well why would why, why would i spend fifteen hundred dollars when i can spend five hundred dollars well you're getting bike fit if you if you've i can get any bike i know what size i need what measurements all that stuff to the millimeter roughly here and there i'll get my tape measure out to fiddle around with it and I have that because I've got experience with bike fit for me. All right, so when you get a bike fit from a shop, from a good shop, then you're getting a bike fit. That's your template now, that's your blueprint. So get a tape measure, measure things up, and it should be sort of second knowledge, what's your seat height from the top of your seat to your center of your bottom bracket. For me, it's about 74. So I know whatever bike I get on now, I can get it. And that's the problem I have with buying bikes online, is bike fit. So if you're a total noob, I don't really recommend buying a bike from the internet or from a shop that doesn't really understand bike fit. Yeah, it should be right, mate. Let's get on there and go. Um, no, it's better than nothing, but you're better off getting a proper bike fit. So if you're in Adelaide, I recommend uh, a lot of people go to the Giant Store, Ashley the Giant Store, or Kim, North Adelaide Cycles. There's a lot of good shops in Adelaide, but these are the two main ones I deal with. Um, Giant, I like Giant. I'm not sponsored by Giant. I like Giant just because they're international brands. So my audience is international. <laughs> so people in Israel or UK or France or Canada or, or you know, Canada, Canada, <laughs> Canada, <laughs> Canada can get a bike, can get a giant, you know, or a track or whatever. But giant, just a good value, a good value bike, good performance bike, and the, the specs of them are very good. So that's why I rave on about giant. Um, but the $5 bike is a fantastic deal. So what I like about the Osprey is it's pretty good performance for the money. I changed the bars, I put my power meter on there, put my preference of saddle on there. Let's see how fast the Osprey flies up Norton Summit. Let's cut the Norton Summit. All right, so here we are now. I did a little, uh, I got some tires from the heart from the from the bin. One I got from hard rubbish on the side of the road and the other one I got from a bin, uh, a Victoria and a Michelin. And I went up Norton Summit. 1388, no, 1338 up Norton Summit. Let's go down, scroll down. That's all about Strava. You can get objective. I'm scrolling down, look for the little segment here. Where are we? Norton Summit, Norton Summit. 
And that's what about subjective training. Most people, what's your average speed? Average speed means nothing. Don't worry about what your fucking average speed means because it means nothing unless you're on the velodrome track where there's no wind and there's no you know real drafting sort of thing. But it it's average speed means nothing. Too many variables. Here we go, Norton Summit. Let's click it on down here. So I did that day. I did 326 watts. Cadence at 1338. 1338. So pretty decent time. But the power is low. I've got a lot more in me for that time. I could, I could really, on a good day, at least 360. At 66 kilos approximately. 360. So this read has a potential to go under 13 minutes with me. So my best time is 1257. All right, uh, that's me 13th overall. It's so got some good names up here. We've got some fast guys. Damon Housen, Oracle Green Edge, under 23 world time trial champion. Chris Harper, that's a fucking flying time. Gazner, some of these guys are the best road riders in Australia. Tim Hedger, I was there that night, he did that. Great ride. Uh, this guy here, Nicola, he rides for Marita Lampre. So you've even got pro tour riders up in the top 10 there. Uh, some definitely, Adelaide produces some really good riders. And uh, Sam Tregorath, he he's a very good time trialist, probably one of the best in Australia, in my opinion. So there we go, Dune Rider, top 15. Um, 13.38. So there, how much difference does the read make? You know, it's uh, it's not much difference. If you're going to be up there, you're going to be up there. If I wouldn't recommend the read for the Tour de France, because the Tour de France... You know, it's every second counts over three weeks. So I think the Osprey is not good enough for the Tour de France, but it would be good enough for 99% of road applications. It would be good enough for the National Road Series, uh, in my opinion. Um, it just needs a power meter on there and uh, your bar preference. But there you go. So that's a little, little critique there. A $500 bike versus $15,000, you don't really get much difference. You get a few seconds here and there. But you can see Norton Summit... My power, when I did the 12.57, let's have a little look-see. Let's have a little look. What power did I do there? So we've got 3.26, and it's the same power meter. I took it off my uh, took it off my TCR. So we're going to here. So I ate dinner too soon beforehand. I could have gone a bit quicker. So 3.48. So I really could do 3.60 with some caffeine and painkillers, maybe 3.80. I reckon I could do a 3.80 with caffeine and painkillers. So this is full natty bra, nothing in the system. So you can see I'm 20 watts less on the read. That is just purely because I just wasn't really pushing hard that that, uh, that evening. Uh, so I could definitely go faster on the read than 1338. So there you go. $500 bike, good enough to fucking fly up Norton Summit and do 200k rides. Uh, will I swap my expensive bikes for the read? No, I won't, but I'll keep the read in the stable. And it's a great little bike, just to prove a point. This whole experiment was just to prove a point that it's more the rider than the bike. So if your mates drop you and you've got Sora and they've got Durace and they drop you, it's not because they've got Durace, it's just because they're just fitter, you know, or they get maybe they're more carved up or other variables. So don't think you need Durace or, or lightweight carbon wheels or whatever to be up the front. Because if you're going to be up the front, you can be up the front on a fucking five dollar bike, as I've proven, all right? So, Durace and lightweight wheels, no worries, no problem having those things. I've got those things. I'm just saying they're not necessary to be up the front. To be up the front is purely fitness.